Hello YouTube, my name is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to the Casual Warhammer League. This is the very first fixture of the season. So the home player here is the Greenskins, and that is played by Anna Garcia, aka F.U. Bloody, and she has picked Altdorf as her home field advantage, as her home stadium, or home battlefield if you will. And on the left flank we have the Dwarves, who are being played by Athelstone, so this is going to be an interesting battle. So we'll start off with the home player. Anna Garcia, what has she brought with her today? Well, we start off with her right flank. So she has these lovely boys by here. These are the Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins, and they look bloody ugly, don't they? They're on the right flank, but there. In the center, we have one, two, three, four, five units of Savage Orc Biggins, and these are beastly, beastly things. Very good units indeed to bring into your Orc army. We also have some Orc Biggins on the left flank as well, and that's her front line. On the left flank, she has another unit of Savage Orc Boar Boys, I think, or Savage, yeah, Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins on the left flank, so she has one each of them. Then in the center line, at the back, she has Goblin Archers, so she has one, two, three of them Goblin Archers. She also has a Goblin Rock Lobber, she has a Ragnarok Spider. With a little bit of experience as well, which is nice to see. And she also has Mr. Grimgor Ironhide himself on the battlefield as her legendary lord. And I think, is that it? I'm just going to double check. Did she bring a shaman? I got a feeling she brought a shaman. Uh, nope, that is it, I think. I think that is it. Okay, so that's her army there. That's what it looks like on the right hand side. On the left hand side, from right to left as well. We have Dwarf Warriors with a little bit of experience. We have some Quarrelers in the front line. He has brought one, two... I think he's brought two units of Quarrelers. He has some more Dwarf Warriors. Again, some experience being used. We've got three Chevrons of experience on these Dwarf Warriors. We've got about five views on this Dwarf Warrior unit. We've got some hidden Long Beards in the... Be uh, in the Beards? <laughs> long Beards in the Beards. We've got Long Beards in the bushes here in the tree line. And then on the left flank, he has some Slayers with some experience as well. Nice to see that indeed. And at the back of his line then, he has some Iron Breakers. He has got some Long Beards hidden behind as well. He's got some Iron Drakes couple of them. He's also got a Thane, which is by here. This lovely chap by here, Thane, with his big ass axe, shield, and beard, of course. And he has Ungrim Iron Fist as his commander, his legendary lord in this battle. And then behind them, you can see he has two gyro bombers with some experience to be in use. So that's what the battlefield looks like. And this is what the battle map looks like in its all its glory, basically. So that's Anna's setup by here. So warrior formation looks like at the start of the battle. That's what his formation looks like, Athelstone. Uh, you can see he's got a bit of a gap between his gyrocopters and the rest of his troops. He's also got a lot of tree line to work with here, so it'll be interesting to see how this battle unfolds. Let's click the play button and watch it unfold. So, here we go. Let's also check the bar at the top as well. Allied troops, this is Anna Garcia's replay as she plays the, uh, the Greenskins. She has a 1,800 and... Sorry, 1,287 troops, whereas uh, Athelstone has 972. So there's a few hundred uh, difference. You can see she has more just by zooming out like this. You can see her line is much thicker. Uh, Athelstone's gone for a more concentrated effort. He has about three lines working around by here. But he's actually progressing forward. Now his gyrocopters are coming forward as well. Just should some rock lobbers being used. Anna's using rock lobbers to do some damage to the longbeard here. Five killed off that volley, but they got some dead dwarfs on the ground. Longbeards are now marching forward the rest with the, along with the rest of the uh, dwarven army. More rock lobbers being used early on. It's a good strategy by Anna here. As he's coming forward, he's got to take the brunt of the rock lobbers, and she's actually got a few early kills here. I think yes, she has. He's gone down from 972 to 949, so he's lost about 20 odd troops so far. Evidently helps, as they say. Another one just hit the dwarf warriors there. Lots and lots of impact coming in on his army right now. Dwarves are flying all over the place. Dwarves are flying all over the place right now. Anna is peppering him with her rock lobber. And that will probably be quote of the day, no doubt. <laughs> so she's kept her formation quite rigid. She has not really moved yet. As we just space barred out to see. She's got a little bit of an angle going as well with the savage orc boar boys. But it looks like 
to counter that, we've got gyro bombers, which might be used to use um, a flanking maneuver maybe on Anna's army. Anna's actually concentrating her rock lobbers now on the. Uh, she's going for the iron breakers at the back by here. She actually hit them as well. And that one missed by there. But she's doing quite a lot of damage before there's any contact at all. She has weakened them by a good uh, 40 deaths. But 40 deaths now. Um, whereas she has not lost a single unit yet. But that might change shortly because Gyro Bombers are going to be in range shortly. Plus the rest of his Dwarven Army. He's still kept that narrow line. That formation is still pretty narrow as you can see. Uh, Slayers haven't really got involved yet either. They're still at the back. I don't know what he's really doing here. He's moving them back across maybe. Maybe he's going to try and whittle them in and flank around. Who knows. But contact's going to be made. Anna's charging out now. She's committing her forces. She has Savage Orc. Uh, big uns. Her big uns are going to be charging. Oh and look at that for here. Goblin Archers. Using some, I think that was some flaming shots there. Oh, it's a Night Goblin Shaman, actually. I do apologize. I was sure I saw one there. I'm pretty sure I was I saw one there, but I finally have, so I do apologize, guys. There he is, the Night Goblin Shaman in all his glory. Unfortunately, I missed him at the start of the battle there, so apologies. But uh, the Savage Orc Biggins are now involved. This art unit here is forming up, I think. We have uh, Savage Orc Biggins involved against the Dwarf Warriors. Let's get the HUD up to see what we're doing. 18 kills for the Dwarf Warriors. Only the one kill so far for the Savage Orc Biggins. They are losing decisively. Not a very good match here. I think that experience on the Dwarf Warriors is actually helping Arthur Stone out right now. Grimgo is getting involved in the center line as well, trying to help out the bulk of his force. The Arachnorok Spiders are actually getting involved on the Longbeards here. I think the Longbeards are starting to lose. This one's got damage to stains. This one is using decisively that arachnorock spider can deal quite a heavy punch and also the iron drakes are flaming up all the grilled orc boar boys here grilled boar boys for everyone although the spider is getting involved well legs dangling everywhere like a porn star on a pole that has drunk too much vodka you just don't know where the legs are these days and that arachnorock spider is killing a lot of troops right there 17 kills so far for the arachnorock should get some more hopefully uh, we have the Gyro Bomber here who's actually taking fire on this flank. I think it's been attacked by the Goblin Archers by here, which are winded. And that uh, Gyro Bomber could actually be routed here, which could secure that right-hand flank for Anna. Both flanks are quite secure at the moment. We do have another Goblin Archer which is going to be used by Anna to counter the Gyro Bombers. We do have some av Savage Orc Boar Boys, uh, which just weren't a match for that Arachnorok Spider. That Arachnorok... Actually, they're the same team. What the fuck am I on about? But they have lost anyway. They're running away. They've had enough of this battle. We have a big cluster by here of dwarves. Longbeards will probably lose here. They have lost. The Orc Biggins have won slightly there. But the Arachnorok Spider is running away. It is routing and it's had enough. Those Pawn Star legs are jogging away from the battlefield. We now have some... Well, we have the Thane that's getting involved. Hopefully he can turn the tide of the battle. At the moment, it's still pretty even. And look at the kill count. The allied troops from Anna are actually going down a hell of a lot. The dwarves have really fought well in this battle. They've come back into it. I thought they were down and out, but they've come back into it. We still have a Gyro Bomber at the back, but he's been pulled away from the action. This Gyro Bomber by here is actually still involved, still doing damage, is still firing, which is good for Athelstone. The Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins have come back, but it looks like this Gyro Bomber is going to be used to mop up and get some kills on it at the back of the battlefield by there. And let's have a look at the tactical map just to see what it looks like right now. The formations have obviously changed in this battle. That narrow formation now is going pretty hard and strong in the centre. Anna's troops are sort of all over the place. She's got a Savage Orc Big Gun just not being used up here at the moment. Taking quite a lot of damage. A lot of her troops are routing and are wavering as well in the centre. So at the moment the dwarves do have the advantage. But it's still all to play for at the moment. We have 600 or so above against 400 or so. So it is still possible. It could go either way at the moment. Still pretty close. Orc Biggins are losing decisively. They should probably die. Thane and Slayers are killing. That Slayer unit is fantastic by the way. Slayers are really good in this game. Grimgore. Hopefully he can run in and turn the tide of battle. He's fighting Slayers at the moment though. Bunch of Slayers attacking Grimgo Ironhide and combat is actually even. Now this Night Goblin Shaman just blowing stuff up like a terrorist right now. All over the place by here. Longbeards are winning against him. Probably not going to be the best of matchups for the Goblin Shaman by here. He may perish. Who knows? A lot of Anna's troops are coming back as well. Although they are running and coming back, running and coming back. That Gyro Bomb is doing quite a bit of damage on the right flank by here for uh, Athelstone. And look at this, I think I fear for this Goblin Archer unit. They're getting charged by multiple units here. We've got Iron Drakes, Slayers, and Thing all charging the archers. Those archers have had their day, I think. Blood everywhere. Look at all the blood just flying around 
They have no chance in hell. As Vince McMahon's theme song goes like in WWE. No chance, no chance in hell. So they're, they've had it basically, guys. We have uh, Slayer here, which are losing. Grimgo is dancing around the park right now. Uh, he is, where is he? Oh, he's on the floor. He's actually on the floor, but he's covered in blood. His blood is all over the place. Um, he's, he's very tired. He's taking fire. Most of the flanks have been sort of taken now. Uh, well, with that being said, yeah, the right flank's been taken. The Gyro Bomb has actually done quite a lot of damage here. Uh, Orc Big Guns are running away. Left flank, though, I mean, it, it, I'd actually say it favours Anna. Although, with that being said, we still have these Quarrelers, which are at the back here. They are still firing. They're still doing damage. And we've got some Goblin Archers from Anna here, which are attacking Athelstone's Longbeards and his Dwarf Warriors. Again, two minutes left in the battlefield here. 300 or so against 300 or so. So, both... Um, opponents are dropping. It's who's going to drop first, basically. I do favour the dwarves at the moment. A lot of Anna's troops are routing. The dwarves seem to have taken the centre now as well. The goblin rock lobber, even though Warg has been activated and plus 58 melee attack is in effect right now, the goblin shaman just decided to attack the Thane as well. Grimgo is fighting Thane. But a lot of uh, dwarven units covering and surrounding uh, Grimgo Ironhide right now. Gyrobomb has even taken some uh, attacking momentum in there as well. Decided to land right in the middle of all this. All this behavior. Oh, he's actually bumping into Grimgo as well. And now Grimgo is losing decisively and that would probably end the battle there. Um, Night Goblin is winded. He has taken a lot of damage. We do have a Savage Orc Big Guns. Again, damage sustained is quite high. And they are also winded. A lot of her troops are coming back again. Though we have Goblin Archers and Orc Big Guns at the back of the battlefield coming back. We also have a Savage Orc Big Gun, which is coming back to the battlefield as well. I'll be interested to see who got the most kills in this battle as well when we get to the end of this video here, which we'll take a look at. Now all the Dwarven units have come away. Your Warriors flee. They are Craven. And the Gyro Bomber is just... I like the fact that gy the Gyro Bomber has been used as a melee infantry right now. We've got two of them all in there. Big massive cluster of troops. Savage Orc begins losing but there. And then the Gyro Bomber is attacking. The, the Gyro Bomber versus a Goblin Rock Lobber in an infantry battle. You don't see that every day, folks. But they are there fighting. And as you can see... We have 292 against 300 left. So they've done a very good job against each other here. They've both taken heavy casualties. They've both fought very interesting tactical battles here. But I think it's going to be the Dwarves' victory. Too many of the Goblins and the Orcs, the Greenskin faction, are just routing, running away. And the battlefields are covered in blood. Look at all the blood this year. Just Dwarven and, you know, Goblins and Orcs just dead all over the battlefield. You can see where Anna's line was as well. This, this line across there is her her defensive line she held. It was a valiant defeat in the end for Anna. So let's just take a little look at the statistics here. So she had 1,334 deployed. She lost 948 and she has 386 remaining. Athelstone, on the other hand, had 972 deployed. He lost 671. He has 301 remaining. Now, let us check a look at the statistics. So Grimgo had 30 kills and the Night Goblin had 29 kills. Whereas Athelstone had 42 kills for Ungrim and 27 for Thing. He had 92 for Dwarf Warriors, 46 for Dwarf Warriors and 8. This one didn't really was utilised that well, the 8 kills only for that one. Whereas on Anna's team, Orc Biggins had 28 kills, 46 and 45. She had 5 Savage Orc Biggins with 48, 28, 30, 56 and 35 kills. Uh, on the secondary line for Athelstone, he had Longbeards with 90 kills. Very good fight from them. 100 kills for the Slayers. 91 for the Slayers. That's why Slayers are so good in the Dwarven Army. 48 for the Longbeards and 99 for the Iron Breakers. And then on the final, on the third line, sorry, for Anna, Goblin Archer 26 and 39. Pretty good. 39 Goblin Archers. That's not, not too bad. 15 though, which is quite bad. They're 16 for the Savage Orc Boar Boys and 30 for the Savage Orc Boar Boys. 92 kills for the Quarrelers, very good performance from them, 30 for this unit as well, 45 for the Iron Drakes, 49 for the Iron Drakes, and only only 6 for that Gyrobomb, which is quite surprising, maybe it's because they're in an infantry fight against Grimgo Ironhide, which was one unit, it was quite funny that was. And then finally we have uh, 30 kills for the Arachnorok Spider, and we had 97 for the Goblin Rock Lobber, which I think was most of the, mostly at the start of the battle, because I think they took about 40 or 50 of... Uh, Athelstone's troops away before they actually make contact. So uh, interesting use of them, but they're very good use of them indeed. And then finally, the last Gyro Bomber had 22 kills. Anyway, guys, I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.